Good morning, everyone. This is Anne-Marie Band with the Moneyball Morning on the Benzinga Pro platform. Today, we're looking at my two favorite ETFs to gauge what market action is going to look like. And it is a little bit messy. There are people sitting on both sides of what they think is going to happen. And so we are just going to trade the rhythms. So let's talk about these rhythms. First of all, we can see from a weekly formation, we are still making higher lows. So if we're trading from a swing perspective, and we're thinking that these lows are going to hold, the premise should then be, hey, as long as I do not break this ledge here in SPY, which looks like 384 or so, or I do not break this ledge without quickly recovering, that's 286 in the queues, this chart does have a likelihood of bouncing. Here's the problem. Because we have so much ebb and flow lately, it's hard to say definitively, hey, I'm going to hold a swing for X, Y, Z because it's going to come down to this support edge. So what really you want to do, if you're looking for a swing, step back, look at this proper formation here that you can see in SPY, and really a rising tide lifts all boats. And so if we continue to head higher, meaning we don't lose the low from Friday, then we'll be in pretty good shape to bounce. But the moment that we begin to fade off of the resistance edge, I suspect we will turn around. So let's now look at what's most likely, statistically speaking, from the chart pattern. So Friday was a pretty messy day. We spiked up and gave everything back. Now notice, out of the last one, two, three, four, five, six trading days, four of them closed lower than the open. So this tells us that in general, people are selling these highs and over the course of last week, they were rewarded every time by getting new lows and they were able to trade there. The big thing that was different was Thursday where they came in they gapped lower, tested lower, and then turned around on a great deal of strength. And then Friday gapped up and then faded all the way back down. So here's the line in the sand. It's going to be, what did we do at the beginning of the month? Now notice that same statistic is here for the cues, but it's even more pronounced. Out of the last six trading days, five of them ended lower and tested lower, well, not this one, but five of them ended lower, four of them tested lower, and then closed underneath the low, excuse me, underneath the close of Thursday, and indeed, underneath the open of Thursday. So the formation still says, bounces are going to sell off, all right? Do not buy any breakouts today, just doesn't look attractive for that. That being said, it is possible that what we are looking at is a price compression event where we are going to pull in the range of motion into the expiration in September at the end of next week. A lot of volatility guys are saying, listen, watch for volatility to compress into the close of next week's options where a lot of things will expire once again. And so that volatility compression allows us to really end up having a, a fair range of motion, but not something that's gonna specifically break out or break down. See the sideways motion on the tight moving average that we're watching here? And you can see the range of motion here. So what am I doing? I'm gonna look at these edges and I'm gonna see if price action begins to collapse there, if not, it's gonna run up the edges and go into the high of Thursday, and maybe we'll even get lucky and go into the high of Friday. If not, I'm going to be looking for it to hold the baseline event here at 392, and if not, we'll be looking at 390. So from a collapse of that, I see lows here at 390, highs here, at 401.60, and that's gonna be our trading range today. You're gonna to be able to look at the same thing in the queues. Watch 
the buyers start to show up. They are trying to exercise control, but they do not have it yet, right? We are in a downward pressure event, and so the bounces, they're going to be sellers waiting up there for us, all right? I know a little bit longer than normal, but I wanted to make you really focus on, wait, what are we looking at? Where is that support? And do I see enough of a pattern that I can play it? And the answer is yes. I believe that that pattern is a range, but the way that you can follow that momentum is by watching these tighter time frames. And listen, if you lose this edge, anticipate that you're going to come down and test support. If the opening tick comes out and it savagely moves up to the north, you know you're going to test resistance. They're going to be sellers up there. Don't try to get in front of the move. Let the traders come in, tell you which way they're going to go, and then follow. And that takes a little patience. Good luck, and I'll see you on the platform.